Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to look at state flow, what it is, when to use it in your simulink models, and how to use it. So let's get started. State flow is a tool that lets you integrate state machines into your simulink models. It's accessible from simulink, but you will need to have a state flow license. Basically, when you are creating logic, there are some circumstances in which you will want to have different operating states for a system. And in those cases, although standalone simulink can also meet your design requirements, state flow is usually preferable. For complex state-based logic, Logic, state flow can make your logic much cleaner, simpler, and more maintainable. Now, when I say state-based logic, an example would be some logic modeling a control system for an aircraft. You may want certain logic to be active when the aircraft is parked, certain logic to be active when the aircraft is taxiing, and certain logic to be active when the aircraft is in flight. You may be thinking, why not just use an if statement or some kind of a switch case statement for this? A key advantage with state flow is that it makes it easy for you to handle transitions between states and to see exactly what is happening happening in any given state. We'll work with an example to illustrate this, but for the moment, let's look at how you can set up a simple state flow diagram in your Simulink model. To begin with, enter SF new in the MATLAB command window. This will create a new state flow chart in a new Simulink model. I already have the model from the if else and switches lesson open, so we'll drag the state flow chart from the untitled model into our model from a previous lesson and we'll close the untitled model. Now let's look at how we can create inputs and outputs for this subsystem. To do that, just right click over the state flow chart and select the Explore option. You'll see an option that looks like a matrix that appears in the resulting browser. This is the Add Data option. Selecting this will add a new entry in the center column. This center column is used to set up inputs, outputs, internal parameters, and external parameters. Specify for the scope that your new entry should be an input. You can also select a data type. Usually you want a floating point double data type, but you may elect to use a Boolean data type to handle a binary signal, or you may be doing something for an embedded system and wish to use some other data type. You can also set up the data type to be an enumeration if you're using any enumerations. Click Apply. You can create an output the same way, so let's do that and click Apply again. Now, you can also create internal or local parameters. These are basically variables that you use within your state flow. Let's say, for example, that you want to use a counter variable to make your state flow exit a state after a set period of time. You could set up a variable for that here. Lastly, you can specify that an entry should be tied to an external parameter. This would be something that you could define in your base workspace, or better yet, in an external M file. Okay, so now you know how to set up a simple state flow model. Let's go ahead and use a simple example to illustrate how you can use state flow and to show you some additional features. To do this, let's make our state flow chart function the same way as our if else statement and switch logic from the lesson with the autonomous car example. This state flow chart will have two states one state for each lane of the two lanes that the car can drive in. I'll minimize the model explorer and let's create these two new states on our state flow chart. I'll resize my chart and then I'll double click on the chart. I'll click on the left sidebar's state option to pull two new states into the chart, which I'll call left lane and right lane. I'm going to add a little complexity that we didn't have last time we looked at the autonomous car example. I'll set up a simple counter variable and use it to add a slight delay to when the car changes lanes, just to show you how counters can be used as timers or debounces in state flow. To do that, I'll go back to Model Explorer, click on Add Data, rename this local variable as Counter, and apply my changes. My one output from this chart is the current lane that the car is driving in, so I'll also rename my output signal current lane. Going back to the state flow chart, we decided in our previous lesson that 1 means the right lane and 2 means the left lane, so I'll keep that convention. I'll set current lane equals 1 in my right lane state, and current lane equals 2 in my left lane state. Now I'll set up a transition between each of my two states, but I won't apply any conditional logic to the transition yet. I'll also set up the logic with the counter variable, a local parameter, such that the car waits a quarter second after all conditions are met before executing a lane change. To do this, I need to add a line to the state to reset the counter to zero, which I'll do with the command counter equals zero and a second line to tell the counter to count up, which I'll do with the command counter equals counter plus one to increment my counter. 
But wait, I need to do some things when I first enter the state, like setting the logic to zero, and other things while I am staying in that state, like incrementing the counter. So how do I do this? Thankfully, Stateflow will let you set entry, during, and exit conditions for your logic. I'll put an entry colon right above where I set my lane of output and initialize my counter, and I'll put a during colon right above my counter increment. I'll copy this logic to the other state, making sure that I keep my current lane output set to 1 for the right lane and 2 for the left lane. As we transition from one state to the next, we need to make sure that the other state's output is deactivated. We can do this on the transitions with conditional logic, or we can do this using exit logic, or we can do this using entry logic. In my case, I'm using my entry conditions to set the current lane output. In each state, we need to make sure that we properly set up our outputs so that we can never activate, for example, both left lane and right lane output values simultaneously. Now, if you've done some programming with, for example, PLCs, you are probably aware that having logic that drives an output in more than one place is dangerous. In our case, we get around this problem by keeping the logic for lane control grouped together so each set of logic drives a single signal. Still, we would want to unit test our logic after completing our design just to ensure that we hadn't made any errors here. So now we've implemented some simple state flow with internal parameters and outputs, but what about inputs and external parameters? We'll use the same two inputs as we used previously. One input will be the maximum speed that the car is able to maintain in its current lane, and the other input will indicate whether the left lane is open, or there is a car in the left lane and it isn't possible to move out of the right lane at the moment. Returning to my model explorer, I'll rename my first input left lane occupied. This parameter needs to be a boolean, so I'll update its data type to boolean as well. Then I'll add a second input, which I'll name adequate speed. I'll move the chart just below the switch logic and feed the same inputs into the state flow chart as are going into the if else logic and into the switch logic. The output of the chart should be connected to a scope, so I'll do that as well. We still need to set up some conditional logic to govern our state transitions, so I'll go back into the chart, click on the transition from right lane to left lane, and specify that this should happen when left lane occupied does not equal 1, and when adequate speed does not equal 1. I also only want the transition when my counter has expired, so I'll set my counter threshold for the transition to be 3, since at a 100 millisecond sample rate, that's just over the minimum quarter of a second delay that I want to have. I'll copy and reuse my counter condition for the transition from the left lane to the right lane also, and add to that a requirement that the adequate speed flag in the right lane does not equal zero. This is a nice example, but there are still a few other things that I want to point out. First, it's possible to have more than one transition into or out of a state. In that case, you may want to specify an execution order on these transitions. You can right-click over transitions connecting states to specify these. The execution order allows you to decide what should happen when the conditions that satisfy the requirements for more than one transition to another state occur simultaneously. Sometimes, if it is possible to transition out of a state to two other states and the transition conditions occur for both simultaneously, you want to be able to specify which transition conditions take precedence over the other. Second, we need the logic to define default to one of the states. I will pull in a default transition from the chart's left object browser and connect it to the right lane state. This tells our logic which state to start in. Another thing that I want to point out is that you can also open a state flow diagram during simulation and watch the transitions between states as they occur. This can be helpful for troubleshooting. Let's go ahead and run our model. Now, I'll compare the state flow output to the switch logic output to verify that the two are the same, other than the counter delays that we added into state flow. Indeed, other than a slight adjustment to the state flow output from the counter logic that I added, the two results are the same. This is just a very basic introduction to state flow, so I would invite you to take the time to try experimenting with it a bit yourself, but I wanted you to at least be a little familiar with it, and I wanted to give you a basic foundation to help you work effectively with state flow. I hope you've enjoyed the session, and look forward to introducing another more advanced topic next time.